Before armies can be built to fight for revolution, ideals must be established that are worth fighting for. Those ideals have to promise a change that leads to an improved form of society. During the 18th century, many intellectuals believed that social progress was directly related to human reason unlocking the secrets of the natural world. These enlightened thinkers reasoned that understanding the discoveries of Isaac Newton relating to the workings of the universe would help them in their goal of perfecting human society. This philosophy or way of thinking was referred to as the Enlightenment, and from it sprang a desire to create a democratic form of government with balanced power. The Enlightenment became a major influence on colonial thinking. Some of the very first seeds of ideas that grew into what would become the American Revolution were actually planted amongst the tulips of Holland. In 1690, the political views of British philosopher John Locke were published in a work titled Two Treatises of Government. Locke had exiled himself to Holland because the Dutch government tolerated the free expression of religion and thought. Thus, free to write his views without fear of punishment, Locke lashed out at the widely accepted view that kings and queens had a divine right to rule over others. The natural liberty of man is to be free from any superior power on earth, and not to be under the will or legislative authority of man, but to have only the law of nature for his rule. The liberty of man in society is to be under no other legislative power but that established by consent in the commonwealth, nor under the dominion of any will or restraint of any law, but what that legislative shall enact according to the trust put in it. John Locke, 1690. Locke reasoned that governments should be established among free people as social contracts. Civil rulers should be given their authority from the people they were governing, not from any divine right. And if that self-appointed government failed at protecting certain self-evident natural rights, including life, liberty, and property, rebellion against that government was justified. This theory proclaiming the right of rebellion based on natural law had a huge influence on the American Revolution. More than 80 years after Locke published his views, Thomas Jefferson incorporated many of them into the Declaration of Independence. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Thomas Jefferson, 1776. Before Jefferson would write the Declaration of Independence, however, many events would have to occur in order to convince American colonists that the British government had infringed too deeply into their lives, liberty, and natural rights. Parliament's decisions to control the colonists through taxes and trade regulations and not allow the colony's self-representation in Parliament were major influences. To publicize the many complaints Americans had against the British, patriots began to organize. Samuel Adams created correspondence groups in Massachusetts to spread the idea of resistance and to exchange information and ideas about the latest British policies. Seeing what Adams was accomplishing, similar groups were formed in other colonies. This network of correspondence groups major influences. To publicize the many complaints Americans had against the British, patriots began to organize. Samuel Adams created correspondence groups in Massachusetts to spread the idea of resistance and to exchange information and ideas about the latest British policies. Seeing what Adams was accomplishing, similar groups were formed in other colonies. This network of correspondence groups had a great impact on public opinion, whipping up the flames of rebellion. They also played a big role in creating cooperation between the colonies and forming a unified cause. Probably the one person whose writings had the most influence on stirring up the idea of American independence was Thomas Paine. Paine had been a corset maker in England, 
but decided he could make a better life for himself in the colonies, where people were not as tightly constrained by the British government. In the colonies, Payne tried several professions. The one that seemed to suit him best was writing. Payne had been in America for only a year when, in January of 1776, he penned his most famous writings, a pamphlet titled Common Sense. Obviously, that single year in America had had a great impact on his life. In Common Sense, Payne argued that the cause of the problems between Americans and Britons was not the Parliament, but rather King George III. He wrote that the king was a royal brute who did not deserve the colonists' respect. He also, as John Locke had a century earlier, declared the authority of all government officials, from governors to senators to judges, should originate from popular consent of the people they governed, not from royal appointment. Making a final point, Payne pointed out that the concept of an island ruling a continent went against natural law. Common sense did not mince words. It called for the colonists to establish an American republic where free citizens, not a monarch, were in control. Payne underscored this notion by concluding that America had an obligation to the world to become an independent and democratic society. Within a few months of its publication, 150,000 copies of Common Sense were circulating throughout the 13 colonies fanning the flames of revolt. This single diatribe, one of the most politically influential ever written, would become a great factor in inspiring patriots to turn their backs on the status quo and embrace these new ideas of a free society.